Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video on using the button widget and we're going to cover core areas with using the button widget such as running APIs or DB queries using the button widget. I'm also going to show you how to run or execute JavaScript using the button widget and lastly, I'll show you how to start the button widget so that it looks great and fits well into your application design system. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. Alright, so right here we are on the canvas and the first thing we need to do is bring in a button widget. So we have a button widget right here and I'm just going to place it on the canvas and then we have a nice looking button widget. The button widget has a lot of properties as you can see um, on the property pane of the button widget. So I'm going to leave that up to you to go check them out. Uh, but the only property I'll be editing here real quick is the label. So let's update this to say something like click me, alright. And heading back to the button widget, it says click me now. The first thing I'm going to show you here we're using the button widget is how to run APIs or database queries using the button widget because the button widget is designed to take some of those specific actions. So to show you how to do this, I have a simple get users API here, which is a simple get um, rest API endpoint that we can run and it returns a list of users as you can see. So we want it such that when we click on the button, we actually go execute this API call and then have that done. So to show you how to do it, it's actually really easy. All we need to do is head back to the button widgets and scroll down a bit to the event section where it says on click. And uh, what we want to do is that whenever this is clicked on, we can go click on this. We want to execute the get users API call. And that's just how easy it is. So clicking on the button right here is actually going to run the get users API call and have the response come back. But we actually can't tell because we are we are not displaying the response right now. But uh, believe me, it's actually working each time we click on the button widget. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to run JavaScript using the button widget. Right now, we are running the REST API call, but we are not able to tell if we have a response coming back. So in some cases, you may want to do more than just run an API call or a DB query. You may want a way to be able to show the user that that call was successful, maybe by showing a message saying it was successful, or you may want to store some value to the local store or perform a navigation to a different page. You may want to do a couple of more things when the button widget is clicked on. And to do that, you can actually run JavaScript on the click of a button. So to show you how to do this, I am going to create a JavaScript file. So here where it says queries and JS, you can click on the plus icon, and head over to create a new JavaScript file, which is the new JS object here. And right here we have a JavaScript file. So I'm just going to call this utils, for example, and let's take out all of the boilerplate code here and call this function the run function. This is an async function, as you can see, it's marked async. And here we can go on to run the get user query. So we can do something like um, await get users.run and that's just still going to run just fine. But we want a way to get the response from this um, API call. So I'm going to do a const res, which would save the data returned from the get user query. And one thing we can do, because we have the ability to write JavaScript here, is show a message to let the users of our application know how much users has been fetched from the API. So this is going to be show a lot. And uh, we can write some JavaScript string here saying found, uh, let's say the number of users, users, found dash number of users. And for the users value, this is going to be coming from, or the counts, this is going to be coming from res.users.length. All right, and that's all we need to do here. And lastly, I'm going to mark this as success, which will be the type of the a lot and uh, that's basically all i need to do here so now that i have this configured i can test this by clicking on the um, run button right here so let's test this and you can see it says fountain users which means the function works as expected now i can head back to the canvas and link that function to the button so instead of running the get users um, api call what I, i'm going to do now is update this to execute a 
JavaScript file and it's going to execute this JS function, which is the utils function and the run method. All right, so that's what I need to do here and I'm done configuring the button widget. Now, if I go ahead to click this, you can see that we have the same response here saying found 10 users from the API call that was made. And you can actually go in to expand this and do a lot more than what I have just shown you here. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to style the button widget because it's very important to have the button widget looking great so that it matches your application and looks really good. Now, heading back to the button widget, you can see we have a couple of styling options. There are actually a lot of styling options here. So we can go change the background color, for example. So I'm going to set this to blue. We can change the button variant. So let's make this secondary, for example. And here we have a nice outlined button. We can also change the border radius so we can make this circular and we can give this some shadow making it look more like a material styled button and this looks so much better than how it was previously we can also set some um, color when it comes to the shadow i'm just going to leave this as default and for icon we can also set an icon for example so let's set an icon and have it centered we want the icon to be centered and we can change the alignment of the icon placement so this has a nice click me text with a nice style button and an airplane icon and we can click on this and this response shows that we have 10 users coming from the utils function the run method we configured earlier so this is how easy it is to make use of the button widget and configure it well you may be interested in controlling the order of API calls or DB queries whenever you run them using the button widget. So you may have multiple API calls or multiple DB queries that you want to control the order of whenever a button is clicked on. We made a video here that shows you how to use JavaScript promises or a sync awaits to control the order of execution of these queries. So please go check out the video here so that you can learn how to do it. And uh, you may also need a simple and elegant solution instead of writing JavaScript each time you want to do something more complicated than uh, running an API call directly. We made a video here that shows how to use ifs, which are immediately invoked function expressions. You can use them easily with the button widget and you should go check out this video to learn how to use them. All right, that'll be all for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, leave a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.